Duck Whistles 101. Let's get it. Now duck whistles can be very effective whether you're trying to use them to call a specific species of duck that they're made for, teal, pintail, widgeon, or whether you just use them as a confidence call to go along with you know your standard mountain hand calls. And your most common duck call whistle is like this. Uh, it's typically called a six and one, seven and one. This one happens to be made by Duck Commander, but they're all basically the same. They all look the same. They all do the same things. I picked Duck Commander because I like what they stand for. I'm a Phil Robertson guy, so what can I say? Now the reason why they're called a six and one or seven and one is because they'll call you know six or seven different things uh, for instance this one will do a teal widgeon mallard drake although not well pintail and then wood duck dove and quail that's why they call it six or seven and one now another common one that you'll see a lot is also made by Duck Commander, and it's the Duck Commander Drake Whistle. And it'll do all the same things that this one will do, but it just has a deeper tone. And most importantly, uh, at least in my opinion, this by far is the better Drake Mallard call. It's the best Drake Mallard call out there to me. The Drake Mallard is one of the most difficult things to replicate. I mean, if you think about it, they just make a wild, crazy sound. It's very hard to, to match that. And though this is not perfect, it's the best, at least to me, and it's the one that I carry. Another popular call that you'll see a lot is a call that I used to carry, uh, but actually lost mine. It's the high roller by Primos. If you struggle to make the pintail sound, if, if it's hard for you to flutter your tongue, this is definitely the call for you if you're looking for a good pintail call. And it'll do some of the, most of the other things too, but it was the, the most realistic sounding pintail call in my opinion, which is why I had it. You'll also see some duck whistles that are made out of wood that are made by various companies. I don't have one of those, so you'll just have to try one for yourselves, but they definitely have their own tone, their kind of own pitch, and some people like that. Try one out for yourself, see if you like it better. Uh, I tend to stick with just your run-of-the-mill whistles. But now that we talked about the different types of whistles, let's talk about how to do the calls on each whistle. We're gonna start with a teal. In my experience, that's probably where this works best. I'm on them. <laughs> Let them make another pass. I've had a lot of success calling teal with these whistles. And in fact, usually multiple people in the group that I'm hunting with have them and we'll all be doing the teal call when uh, you know a group of green wings fly over. We've done really well doing that. Green wing teal call is super simple. It's just, that's all he does. He kind of just peeps. And an actual one kind of has a little bit of a flutter to it. I've not been able to find anything or anyone that can replicate that to do it perfect, but I know that just your standard works just fine. And one mistake I, I, I see some people do from time to time is they'll do more of a, like a, and that's not uh, the proper way to do the teal call. You want your T at the beginning, not at the end. If you go, your T is at the end. You need to go t -t 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 -t. just making a T sound and blowing t -t 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 -t. instead of a. Now, does it make that big a difference? I don't know, but I just know when I hear it, I know that the one sounds like somebody blowing a duck call and the other one sounds like a teal. If you want to be the most realistic, try to put your T at the beginning. Next, let's go to the pintail. Now, I've had some success calling pintails, but pintails are just hard to mess with no matter what you do. If you're not where they want to be, they're kind of it's kind of just 50-50 on them. I still blow the pintail call. It's not like a, a sure thing every time, but basically on a call like this, you always want to stick your finger in the end of it to give it that deeper tone. Versus that's too high pitch. Pintails are lower. Pretty simple, easy to do. Just flutter your tongue and blow sharp notes into it. Like I say, if you struggle to flutter your tongue, get the Primo's high roller and it has a roller in there that will do that for you. Next, let's move on to the widgeon. That's a fun call, I like doing that. But it's just a three note deal with the second note kind of held out. The way you do that is just blow harder on the second one and make sure you're enunciating that note more than the other two. You want to not put anything on the end on that one. Uh, widgeon call, 
they call like crazy a lot of times so it can be very effective as well next let's move on to the mallard drake probably the most uh, unrealistic sound that i hear out there that hunters do and just to me the key to doing a mallard drake call is a low low deep bass hum if you do it high it's gonna sound like a tree frog you want to go low low I think the Duck Commander is by far the best. I'm just doing a boop, boop. I also kind of use some hand inflection like you would on a Mallard hand call to, to kind of make the end of it sound more like a Mallard Drake. It's just really important that you get that low, deep bass sound. You can also add in, you know, that sided Drake that you hear Drakes do a lot of times. That and you know, when they get excited, they'll do that. Now the effectiveness of the Mallard Drake call, I don't know, I'm torn on it. I felt like there's been times where I thought it specifically was doing the job, but very few times using it, have I actually seen a duck for sure react to it. Now have ducks come in while we were all doing Drake calls? Absolutely, but to where we hit it and the duck turned on it, or we seen it affect it in a positive way, very few and far between, um, but who knows? You know, we use them. I just kind of keep the Mallard Drake thing in the toolbox for late in the year or just when nothing else is working. As I mentioned earlier, you can do a wood duck call in here, but if you were gonna, if you were targeting wood ducks, I would definitely go with the Duck Commander wood duck call. I just think it's way better. Um, so I wouldn't even do a wood duck call with this because it just, it doesn't sound that good to me. Now, duck whistle is a great call for everybody. Like I said, I keep one on my lanyard and I use it almost every day, but it's also a really great call for beginners who want to be a part of the call-in but haven't really learned, mastered the mallard hen call yet. You can take one of these with you and kind of participate with other guys calling and, and be of use, be of value. And it's great for kids too. It's great to start them out, uh, let them be a part of the hunt. It's a good tool to learn how to call with other callers and learn how to read the ducks without having to, you know, focus a lot. If you're the guy blowing a whistle, make sure that you're not calling at the wrong time. When it's time to be quiet and let the ducks come, don't blow your whistle. But like any other kind of call, as far as actually using it, duck hunting, just pay attention to how the ducks are reacting to it. Some days they like it, some days they don't. And if you notice that they're not responding positively when you're blowing the duck whistle, put it up. Likewise, if you're blowing your mallard hen call and you're not getting the desired reaction add in some whistles with it and this experiment i mean i've seen some days where these whistles were were game changers and i've seen other days where you might as well not even use it uh, but especially when i'm hunting teal pintail widgeon any of that i'm using the duck whistle i'll link these two down below in the description if you want to check one out uh, those are affiliate links if you decide to get one it helps out the channel uh, it doesn't cost you anything more but it does go to help out the channel put some practice on it and you'll be ready for duck season when it rolls around if you want to see five mistakes that a lot of new duck callers make and learn how to avoid them click this video right here if you want to see some other tips check out this playlist at the bottom subscribe if you hadn't already i love you and lord willing welcome Catch you next time right here on Chasing Green.